Welcome back everybody. In the end of the last video we had completed our blacks using the live paint bucket and that was just to establish our dark. So what we're going to do is expand all the dark areas first. Next I'm going to come over to my magic wand and then we are going to use our pathfinder and basically just unite all of the blacks. So that is kind of the, the step number one. Now again if you wanted to modify any of these shapes you're not super happy with them, I would not unify them or unite them until you are completely, completely happy. So I say everything looks good, so I am going to unite it. Okay, so we are going to select everything. We are going to do our live paint. I'm going to say make. And the first thing we're going to do is, since my blacks are going to be a little bit more of a dark purple, I'm just going to go back through and color those up make our life nice and easy and realistically it will still break some things down so as we do our live paint bucket as things overlap just be aware that they might be in some segments still which is not a big deal major thing you just want to be looking for is that you have completely filled in all of the blacks the color you want next you're just going in and coloring them pretty much the flat or uh, kind of a, a good hue and then we can always come back. So it could be two different philosophies and the number one is just kind of go straight at the color that you want. The other one, since we are gonna be adding some shadows as well as coming back and adding some highlights with the gradients, then you might go just a slight bit darker than what you would want and then brighten them up with the, the gradients in a later phase. So all we're doing is coming through Keep in mind what the live paint bucket does as well is it also creates a new shape. So that is another reason that I do like this as well. So you don't have to do a whole new set of uh, Pathfinder and or do a whole new set of the pen tool by creating new shapes. So this will actually do it for you. It does the exact same thing as a Pathfinder would do. And it is literally 10 times easier. So this is a great strategy. If you have not done this, I think this is a very, very easy thing for beginners to do. And all we are doing is coloring all of our flats. And all we're thinking of is what colors that we want. And also just be aware that you can always modify these. So if it's not perfect, if for this first round, no biggie, we are gonna be able to ungroup them. And then we will be able to come back in and change them uh, just like any other shape. So it is a very, very easy fix if we don't like it. The major thing is just double checking that yes, I did in fact color everything. And the thing that people most of the time forget to do is the white areas. So just double check that yes, I did fill in all of my whites. And then you should be good to go. Last little boogie check here before we expand. All right, looks good. So I am going to black arrow, select, come up to the top, object expand. I'm gonna hit okay. And then typically we will ungroup and the magic number is usually three. I'm gonna deselect, select, ungroup, and usually it takes around three times. I do not know why. It just usually takes right around three and what we're looking to be able to do is select each individual shape by itself again. Okay, flat colors are done. So what I would do before moving on is I would knock down the tolerance to right around five or 10 and then unite all of your colors. So all of the darks, all of the face colors, anything that was kind of grabbing in separate chunks before, you just wanna put those all into the same shape. So I would unite all of those before moving on. If you say, hey, everything looks good, then we are going to go over into our layers menu. Good. Now again, I would say flat color on this one. And we are going to duplicate this guy out. I will then lock out the bottom one. On this top layer, this will be our shadow layer. Shadow, shadow. Okay, now on this shadow layer, we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go magic wand. I'm going to select the purple and I'm basically going to delete out the purple. Now, if you like having the purple there, no problem. It really doesn't matter since it's there's a, a duplicate layer be directly beneath it, but we're just going to hide those. So we're nice and clean on this layer. 
And then it's also a little bit easier to see where our shapes are, especially when we are doing our cast shadows. So what we're gonna be using is the knife tool. And what we are also gonna be using is kind of a version of the line as well as the pen tool, especially for the more complicated shapes. And I am going to duplicate this layer before cutting into it. So I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to go a layer above. I'm going to call it gradients. And then I'm going to lock it out. And then I'm going to go to the layer below. So since that is kind of our flat color layer, anytime we're doing gradients, you want solid areas because it's going to go over the highlights as well as the shadows. So that's why we are duplicating out this uh, flat color layer. And since we aren't adding on any of the gradients to the purple areas, then it's really not that big of a deal. So the first thing that we're going to do is with the knife tool, select the shape, and then with the knife tool, go all the way through. So the major thing is going all the way through those edges, deselect, and then I can color up one. Now for the hair, what we're looking for is kind of a drop or cast shadow from our headphones. So I'm going to use the line tool, just go straight through all of the shapes come back in shift C and I'm just looking to mimic that curve as best as I can it does not have to be perfect by the way let's do another line so this will be the shadow from the top part of the headphones shift C let's just do a nice slight little curve looking good so what I'm looking to do is select both of those new lines I want to hold down shift and I want to select the hat as well as the hair. And then we're going to go into Pathfinder and we are going to divide. So the next little thing, whenever we do the divide, just remember to ungroup it. And then we should be able to come in, select our little shapes. There will be another little extra shape in there, just so you're aware. Color those one step up and then I am uniting them by the way same thing with the hair one step up and then unite the new shapes and why are we uniting them in case you especially if you start zooming in you'll notice that there's these really faint little lines so that is just a nice little habit to get into just to clean those up so they don't show up on your final all right the next little cast shadow we are gonna do is I want a little cast shadow on the hair and then around for the headphones so I'm just, again, using the pen tool, and I'm just doing nice straight lines. I do not want to fill, by the way. And then we're going to do the same process that we did before. Just Shift C. I'm just going to round out those corners a little bit. Same thing in the bottom. Round out those corners. And whenever we're looking, just make sure you go all the way through those shapes. So that's a real key if you're using the knife and or if you're doing the divide, just double check that you have gone all the way through. Next, just double check that you have ungrouped. And then we can go one layer up. And then I just have my nice little shape. All right, looking good. All right, the next one, we're gonna do a little bit more of a complicated shape. And this is gonna be for the brill casting a shadow and I'm just going to go from the corner and we're just going to pretty much just pull out a line and this could be completely up to you on how far you want the shadow to be casted keep in mind we're going to go in two different directions so it's going to drop down first and then we're going to pull up in the opposite direction and what I'm basically looking for is the forehead and then, then a little bit of the top of the eyeball there okay so as you are doing the cast shadow, just remember that you have the line selected, you're gonna have the face color selected, as well as the blue part of the iris. Now, if there was a part of the whites of the eyes that was gonna be covered, so if you really drop that shadow down, just double check that you have those selected as well. Then you are gonna click the divide, divide. We are gonna ungroup. And then we're just going to go one level up. Same thing with the blue part of the eye. All right, looks good.
Let's just do a real simple one over here on the front part of the hair. So we're just going to go one step darker under the brill. The brim, not brill, brim. All right, and we're just going to do one last one under the, basically on the back side of the mouth there. So I'm just drawing the line tool. Again, notice that I'm going all the way through the shapes. I'm just coming back, Shift-C, same process, by the way. And why we're doing this instead of the knife tool, keep in mind you could 100% do the knife tool if you like that a little bit better. This is just showing you a little bit more control over your lines. Other solution as well, just to give you all sorts of solutions today, is I could always do the knife tool, and then I can always come back and minus points, and I can always control that line. Sometimes you just have to mess around with the order. So a lot of the times you'll notice that you're going to be messing with the shape, and it's going to be the one behind, and it just doesn't show up. So that's the only thing that pops up or happens on occasion when you do the knife tool, and then try and modify that edge or the stroke. All right, have both of them selected. Divide, make sure you ungroup. Color that back part. And then just notice that there's that little gap. So we are gonna come back in. I wanna select both of those shapes and we're just gonna do this with the knife tool, by the way. And then just go all the way through. And I'm going to select the two new shapes. And we're just going to color those up. Looks good. And now I will unite those as well. And unite. So just before we move on to the next step, you're just looking for any random little stray lines that could be poking through your colors. Okay, looks good. Now if you like more of a obvious drop shadow, you could up the values a little bit more just so that the gradients can be more or less subtle. So on the, one of the last videos, we did show you that you can change the opacity of the gradients as well. All right, so I'm now going to be moving on to gradients. I did click on the eyeball on the gradients, and since we duplicated out those colors, just realize that all of the shadows that we just created are on the layer below. So just be aware that we're going to be hanging out on the gradient layer. And now we are just going to be coming through. And then just going light to dark pretty much on each one. So it's either going to be a linear one. And then if you want to have more of the values come through, we are going to be changing the opacity of each of the colors. Now we're going to be doing this on the inside of the mouth as well as the tongue. But notice that we did not do any cast shadows in those areas. So I'm not changing the opacity on those two just because we didn't change those up at all. Just so they pop out a little bit more. All right, we're going to do the face. Go light to dark, and you might need to change up the direction a little bit. All right, so we're just going to change up those colors. And really just kind of think of what direction we were putting the cast shadows in and then you can really just modify the colors accordingly so I do want to have a fairly transparent gradient so you can come through and see the shadows below and just keep in mind the more you modify that the more you, the shadows below become more obvious and the other way of doing it too is you can change the opacity on the entire layer so that is an option as well. So in the transparency, you can modify that whole thing. So in this little guy, we will be kind of thinking of the upper left-hand corner is where the light source is going to be coming from. So pretty much everything will basically follow that direction from light to dark from kind of the top down. All right, let's do a radial. And all we're going to be doing is you can kind of see we're going to use the same process of having the lightest color on the left, darkest one on the right, and then you can just modify that, really just to, for your for your liking. Okay, we're going to click this. This one's going to be radial as well, so we're going to go white, and then we're going to do a little bit of our light gray, 
And I am going to make that a little bit more opaque. So I want the white to be a little bit more opaque on this one. All right, let's move on to our hair. Do a linear one on this one as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these compound paths. So I'm going to select them. So whenever we do a compound path, each one of these will be seen as one whole. So it'll go light to dark going across all three of those shapes rather than having a gradient on each one of those. So sometimes the compound path feature will make your lives a little bit easier. Especially if a lot on in the same color. We might even do that again for the hat as well. Okay, light to dark. I think we're getting pretty close to being done. All we're going to do is do the headphones. Alright, first let's just do these teeth. And all I'm going to do is go radial. And pretty much do the same ones we were doing with the, the hat there. I'm just going to pull that over so it's a little bit wider longer. Okay, I think we are good. Grab all of our pink. All right. And I'm going to go light all the way to the darkest. All right, guys. Save check. Done and done. So keep an eye out for some new playlists coming out this school year. If you guys are liking the channel, definitely subscribe. Make sure you guys are sharing away. And uh, definitely share your results. Uh, if you are looking for all of our resources, again, they are hanging out on jasonseagrass.com.